I'm beginning a new project based on a piece that I found in this book by Verna Cook Salomonsky, Masterpieces of Furniture. It's an oak bench, 17th century, very popular piece of furniture that was built in the 17th century. These were used not only as benches, but they were tables and, and uh, provided other functions around the homes. These were typically oak also, and uh, very popular. Now I plan to use this as a coffee table in our house. So I think that will, the height and the width and the uh, look of it will fit in quite well with our other 18th century furniture. Now, as you know, I start out with SketchUp in modeling in SketchUp. And first of all, that means scanning whatever diagrams are available. And in this case, it's a nice um, orthographic view and some details. And I scan this at very high definition and bring that uh, picture into SketchUp and then start modeling the components. So here is the result of that work in SketchUp. Here's the three-dimensional model, a perspective view. And in addition to that, I produce an orthographic view, so the front side and end views, uh, front and top views, and then an exploded view, for example, and then I go into each component and dimension all the joinery and shapes and so on. Now this piece has, it's a small piece, but it, it has um, quite a number of complexities and uh, uh, beautiful features. For example, note the carving here on this apron piece. Um, and, in that, and that is quite deep carving. A floral design of some type. Even in the 17th century, they liked to have this type of decoration in their furniture. Here, notice the detail on the, on the stretchers, both the end and the front and back stretchers. There's actually an inlay uh, as well here, a black, alternating black and white inlay in these triangular pieces. I'll be using sketch, uh, I'll be using ebony and holly to alternate these colors here. Also, the face of these stretchers are richly molded, and I'll be working to create some uh, different types of, of tools, uh, the scratch stock, for example, and shaping metal blades to create some of these, these shapes. So there's quite a number of uh, details uh, that will be interesting to work here. Uh, note that the legs are splayed in one direction, that really gives the bench a lot of support and strength. And it's held, these legs are held together with these strong mortise and tenon joints that are pinned. And, and uh, these uh, heavy elements will, will really give us a strong piece of furniture. Now, the first thing that I'm beginning to work here are the legs and you can see in this view where I've actually done some turning on two legs and I've got a blank here that's ready to start turning. I am using ash and the original piece was in oak but I 
I have a nice source of local Modesto ash that's air dried and it's uh, quite nice lumber to work. I know that in some cases there's a lot of kiln drying ash that you can use that is great for baseball bats and it's hard material but uh, I find this this material to be uh, quite workable. Now I had to glue up to get the thickness of these blanks. This is two and three quarter square and as you can see here I've got a seam so that I glued up two pieces to uh, make the dimension. And when I uh, glued this up, let me pick up this to show you how I how I glued this. I like to use these wooden clamps uh, on the ends because they kind of um, hold together. When you have glue on these surfaces in here, the pieces tend to to move, and you don't want them to separate too far. Uh, so that you don't lose your dimension. So when I clamp with these wooden clamps on the end, that tends to fix this and the boards do not try to shift on me. Then I can take the larger clamps and squeeze down hard because this is thick material and it, and it can take a lot, of, a lot of real strong stress to it to pull that seam together. I did use a hand plane to hand plane these internal glued surfaces first. Uh, so that really gave me a good seam. Now, so the other thing after gluing together, then, then you need to mill this to the two and three quarters square dimension. And that can be uh, somewhat tricky. Uh, you you want to make sure that in the end you've got all these uh, surfaces square with one another. And the way I do this is I run a face through the jointer and then I hold that face against the fence in the jointer and get another joint surface square to the first jointed surface. Then I've got, and, I, and I'm checking this with my little squares often to make sure that all the machinery is working correctly and giving me the, the, the squareness. And, and now that I've got two faces that are square, then I can go to the thickness planer and thickness plane this down to the exact dimension. And while I'm thickness planing, I'm also checking to make sure that all four of these faces are square. The reason I want to have this square is because I'm going to be turning the center section and the turning needs to be in the center of the of the square parts of the of the leg. Also it's important to make sure that when this goes on the lathe that you've got a good center a located center and I just penciled in the the uh, corner to corner diagonals here to find those centers 
and then just used a center punch to center punch that dimension, that location before putting it into the into the lathe. Now, I have not carved, well, before that, I want to mention the templates that also come out of SketchUp. Um, for example, here is, here is the uh, template for the, for the leg, and it's, the template is cut down through the center line, and that allows me to hold this up on the uh, tool rest in the lathe and mark the locations of the details in the in the turning. So this works out quite well for for the lathe work. The other thing I was not sure of, I have not carved ash before and there's this very nice floral decoration in the in the apron of this bench. Now the template for this apron is also comes out of SketchUp. This is the center line, so I don't need to make a full length um, template. I can use this template for for both sides of the uh, carving. And so I did a little practice, not on a full width piece, but just a part of the carving here. And I made uh, a printout from SketchUp, full size. I taped it down on the blank piece and used an acetone process to transfer the, the lines, this pattern, onto the onto the ash and then I began carving the background the grounding here is one eighth inch deep and I did use a trim router to uh, take out a lot of that waste but obviously there's a lot of carving with uh, various gouges and chisels to to do this I found the carving of this ash to be uh, quite easy. Well, uh, it, it was. It did not create the grain structure. Didn't cause a problem. The hardness. This does not seem to be that hard, and the and it worked quite well. So I'm happy with that. But this will be the longest. This will take longest. The activity procedure in this bench will be getting the carving because I got to do this on two different aprons full length. The hardest part of the carving is making these little berries um, that I had not done before. But I'm pleased that that's going to work out quite well and I'm anxious to get to that stage. The next thing I'll be doing after turning is creating the mortise joints and then going on to the aprons and the stretchers to connect this together. So it'll be challenging and I think an interesting project for me.